This Year's Garden by Cynthia Ryland. Pictures by Mary Zilagi. At the end of winter, we all go down and stare a while. Uncle Dean squatting and chewing on a weed to think. A garden after winter is a wonder to see. All brown stalks and blackbirds working. Quiet, just brown and waiting for someone. Uncle Dean and Uncle Joe discuss what we'll plant this year, figuring on more potatoes but fewer beans because Granny said she's not canning an army's worth of beans this year. Granny's getting tired of canning. We're all a little disappointed because we all like beans. We stare at the garden a while longer, feeling spring on us and ready to run for a hoe. But first we have to wait for the rain to stop, for the ground to dry up and the weather to warm up, waiting for the last frost. And finally, close to June, we are planting. All of us bending, dropping seeds as we walk backwards while someone follows with a hoe. Wide straw hats bobbing in the garden. We are quiet in the heat, talkative when it gets cool, talking about picking some poke for salad, and will the tomatoes blight? And what about some eggplant this year? We look a lot alike, too. Noses and arms up to the sleeves sunburned. Purely white foreheads, those of us with hats. And fingernails just full of dirt. Then, later in the summer, we have a garden. Full of vegetables and mole holes beetles and big grass spiders late in the evening the beagles run through crying after a rabbit or maybe a possum we hurry down to pull some carrots for company or turn over potatoes to wheel into the cellar shucking corn snapping peas stewing tomatoes and canning lids popping so much we think we hear them in our sleep. And when the vines and stalks are empty, when the soil's all been turned, and it is blowing into winter, we sit with the neighbors and compare about who had the best luck with this year's garden. Outside the garden's brown again, the crows are back and we are, all of us, waiting for next year's garden. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.